All right. Hello, everyone who's joining. Uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, so today I, I decided to do something slightly different. And I decided to, uh, to talk a little about, uh, about my journey. So if you have been by any chance following me, uh, you know that uh, I'm a Cyprus ambassador and that I that I write uh, Cyprus blog every every week and uh, yeah that's kind of that's kind of what I do when beside that I do this these streams and videos courses on Cyprus IO and stuff like that and uh, last week I I uh, like independently a couple of people asked me uh, about my about basically where I learned uh, stuff, um, stuff uh, related to coding, to uh, creating tests and and uh, and stuff like that. So I decided uh, I decided to talk about that, and uh, let me just uh, yeah. So this was the screen I originally wanted to share with you. Let me just get my show notes here. Uh, yeah, so this is this is my blog. If you if you read it, then that's awesome. Uh, every week there's a new Cypress blog, so make sure if if you uh, make sure you check it out if you don't don't already know it. You can also s- subscribe to the article, subscribe to YouTube, Discord, uh, what uh, whatever you like. If if you find this uh, content um, useful for you, uh, so yeah. Uh, I got this question on how I learned stuff, and I and I thought I'd maybe share something about um, about what was my journey so far, um, and in case that is useful for you in uh, in any way. And if that is, uh, let me know. By the way, if you are still on the path of learning to program, learning to test, learning uh, learning anything technical. Uh, feel free to drop me a message, ask a question, or or, or anything. Basically, let's have a conversation. Uh, let me let me know what's what's your journey. Um, so yeah, how how did we land uh, here on the on the weekly blog on on things like uh, on things like this? Uh, you may or may not know that. Um, I I'm I didn't come f- uh, to to the tech world uh, by studying on a uh, on a school. I didn't study programming. I didn't study software development. I originally studied uh, psychology, and uh, uh, I actually wrote uh, an article about uh, about what psychology taught me about uh, about QA about my current occupation. And there were some lessons learned from psychology, and there are some um, there there are some things that uh, applied from psychology can be applied to to programming. And um, uh, if you if you like, you can <laughs> you can give that a read. But yeah, the the thing is, I I started I started in psychology. Uh, I always loved tech. Uh, I always have loved computers, and I really, really enjoyed enjoyed working with uh, with computers. I even tried to make my own website uh, when I was in uh, in elementary school, and um, well, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was really into computers. The reason why I didn't go study uh, anything technical was. Uh, was surprisingly uh, my teacher. <laughs> uh, I I sucked at math uh, when I uh, when I started. Uh, yeah, when I was in high school. Uh, of course, yeah, I was a teenager, so yeah, of course, it, it wasn't only that I sucked in math, but I didn't really want to study it. But uh, yeah, I wasn't good at it. And I think my teacher wasn't very good at it either, or wasn't <laughs> rather wasn't uh, good at at uh, teaching the math, because I I kind of tried 
to to be better i kind of enjoyed enjoyed math before but um yeah that didn't go well so what happened to me is that i stopped believing in in uh, in uh, programming or software or tech being the path for me so that's kind of uh, uh, yeah, it it really really tells you a lot about how how teachers are important, how how they can uh, lift you up or put you down. Um, but I I don't uh, I don't feel like um, uh, I don't feel resentment uh, because actually I I went down a very interesting path through my life, even though I I f- for a moment I I didn't believe that. Uh, going on a technical uh, road was for me, uh, and it uh, and gave so much to my life. So, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, so yeah, I uh, so I studied psychology. Then I went to then I went to uh, do uh, counseling. I actually worked for an online counseling site, sort of like a hotline uh, for for young people. But it uh, instead of uh, doing it on uh, uh, via phone, it was done via chat, and uh, this experience has brought me like uh, the the sense of what the psychology counseling is, how important that is, especially for young people. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't feel that this was this was the right path for me, and the whole thing being an online thing. Uh, was uh, kind of there were some some kind of technical challenges some kind of uh, uh, some kind of creative stuff and I got more and more into into the tech stuff so for example let's change the banner on the side so I tried to create a banner I learned a little graphics and stuff like that and um, and uh, yeah then we need to change some CSS on the side so I tried to figure out what, uh, how to change colors on the side and, and stuff like that. I played with WordPress and, um, and yeah, basically tried to, uh, try to create uh, something, try to, try to make things work. And then I realized, well, maybe this is this, uh, maybe I should learn something more about it. So my friend, uh, uh has, has, um, uh, recommended to me to check out code academy so code academy i think it's dot com but i'm not sure yeah code academy.com so this is where my journey started and the site looked a little different back then uh, it's now more modern it was pretty cool back then uh, too but uh, what this site actually does and why it is interesting is that it has these interactive uh, interactive uh, courses, interactive uh, lessons for you prepared. So you'll sign up here, you choose what you want to learn, and then this is the important part. You learn by doing. Uh, so there's an example. Uh, it's all, I, th- I think it, it's still all text based so you have to read the assignment read the explanation and then you have the challenge of doing something on your own so for example if you're learning html then you need to create a block uh, create an html tag open it close it put something uh, put something in the middle if you're learning css you change colors you change uh, radius and and stuff like that uh, so yeah, you are learning by doing. So that is that is really really important, and uh, and it was it was really fun. I I spent hours on this, and it can be really simple. It's really made for people that that have not done basically anything in uh, in um, in tech. So and that was my that was my uh my case as well i wasn't i didn't have a skill i just knew i kind of liked sitting by the computer uh, and i liked creating stuff and yeah i learned how to i learned html and css uh something which seems like when you're testing uh that seems like something you should already understand 
but at that time this was actually something I needed to learn so I learned that and uh, to anyone starting I highly highly recommend Code Codecademy I mean there are definitely many many good resources online so if you google something you'll probably find find tons of great resources to for you to learn uh, but yeah Code Academy was my journey uh, after that I decided well maybe maybe I should uh, maybe I should do something more with that so I uh, I don't know if if I clicked on an ad or if I if this like, like jumped into me but I looked into Team Treehouse um, and Team Treehouse is a video based uh, online uh, learning space uh, but it's also highly interactive so you got oh sorry you got uh, great instructors over here uh, that can teach you that can teach you well basically anything I mean the library of this is quite amazing and they have these they have these tracks you can go by so if you want to learn about web development you want to create websites uh, then you can then you can do um, then you can do that it, it has basically a couple of lessons coupled together and they can uh, they will kind of guide you through the journey of creating a website so I started naturally since I was playing with WordPress I started with PHP I started with uh, WordPress and creating sites with WordPress but I also learned uh, some kind of I learned HTML and CSS and design they have great courses on, on design here one one difference between this and Code Academy is that this is actually a paid service so uh, I I was ki kind of already decided that this might be a good investment uh, of, of the money and good investment to to learn and to up my skill the code academy is absolutely free so you can start like right now um, and yeah so so yeah if I were to recommend uh, anyone to if they want to start learning I definitely recommend code academy uh, and if you're looking into like more of an interactive uh, experience with your learning then treehouse is definitely a good choice there as i said there are tons of great um, uh, great uh, free resources so the most famous one being the free code camp so free code camp i think this is dot org so I better just Google it and, and start start like that. And yeah, there are more than 6,000 tutorials. So basically endless resource of, of learning opportunities and it's for free. So if you're looking into into getting into tech, try to try to create a website or something, this this would be a great resource. Uh, the other thing I I'm thinking about when someone asks me like basically where to start uh, would be to answer that with a counter counter question like what do you want to create what what is your why do you want to actually get into this what is it you saw that is uh, so nice that you want to create it on your own uh, many times the the answer is well I want to build a website I want to build a blog I want to create uh, my personal website or create a uh, an um, online store or something like that uh, and that that's actually that that's a good thing to to have answered like what do you want to create uh, or what do you want to do uh, one more thing that comes to my mind is that testing uh, if you're if you're new to the whole tech world you don't really need to jump into being a developer uh, I think testing or QA is a great way to to have like to do these baby steps into into the tech tech world because as a as a, 
uh, tester, if you're testing a web app, what often happens is that, well, you will take a site and you, you explore it, right? You click on buttons, you try to sign in, you try to search, you try everything and more. And uh, then when something breaks, uh, as it would when you, when you are testing some kind of development version of, of the software, well, with, web, uh, with uh, websites or web applications, you would go with inspect element and then try to look what's inside, what's happening over here, uh, right? And things start to get familiar. If you already know HTML, well, voila, this is HTML. There I have it. Uh, and this was kind of an aha moment for me. And I mean, I, I kind of understood that pages are made from HTML, but I didn't know like that every page on the, on the, on the, on the internet was actually made of HTML. And this may seem like a funny thing, but well, if you don't know, you don't know. Uh, and then also when I look into the styles, what I notice here is that this is CSS. This I know already, right? Because I have created something on, on Codecademy. Uh, so this, these are some kind of small revelations you get when, once you're learning, but you, but what you cannot really learn if you, if you're just using, using the internet as a, as a user. And these are nice to, these are nice to, uh, find out the next natural thing when you find out dev tools, which are awesome by the way, and you, you, you should learn, you should learn to work with them that you can pick an element and I don't know, click on this button and change the background color or change the border color, things like that. You can play with this. Uh, and what I actually did when I was, when I was starting, uh, I would use dev tools to change the website to, to my liking, like change the font, change the, uh, radius of a button, change the color and stuff like that. And I would just copy this whole thing, try to find the right file in the VS code or sublime or anything, and just paste it over there and may and save that refresh the page and see if, if, uh, if the right thing changed. So you can experiment, you can, you can do, uh, yeah, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff and don't worry, you will not break the web or anything. Uh, and having that experimental, experimental mindset i think it's it's uh it's good like don't be afraid to to break things would probably be my advice thank you andre uh feel free to feel free to ask a question if uh, if you're interested in uh in anything anything that i'm talking about by the way anyone who's here uh feel free to ask uh, i'd be happy happy to answer so uh yeah the other thing, like this other big, uh, big thing that I was attempting to learn was of course, JavaScript. And I started here on Treehouse and the experience was kind of so, so it's, uh, while you're working only with, uh, HTML and CSS, it, it feels great. Like it feels like you are creating something because you can see what you have created. But once you start with JavaScript, it seems like the learning curve is kind of steeper uh, with, uh, yeah, with JavaScript. Uh, because if you want to make a button interactive, then you get to this weird kind of get element by class name and brackets and, and stuff like that. It kind of gets more complicated than just creating your HTML and styling your, your thing with, C with, uh, CSS. And I've been actually thinking of creating a simple course on, uh, on JavaScript for beginners or JavaScript for testers rather. Um, because what you can do is that you can really, really start, uh, easy and, uh, uh and yeah, you can create a simple JavaScript file. Uh, let me just, I have this tool that's called Quokka and 
for example, the simplest thing you can do in JavaScript, you don't even have to write a function, is to write uh, some variable, call it hello, and assign a string that's called world, and then console log it out, console log hello. And you can see that you're kind of, you're creating something interactive now. And building up from that and finding the right steps on how to do the next thing, I think that is, that is really a big challenge for instructors that want to teach uh, JavaScript. And at the same time, give you this feeling of satisfaction that you have actually created something. By the way, if you did this in in your console, like if you would create a variable and then co uh, console log it out, it it works too. So you don't need to like have uh, Quokka or anything or Note or anything that's that's complicated. You can start learning JavaScript just inside your console. But there are also gr many great tools uh, online like JS Fiddle. Fiddle, is it? Yeah, JS Fiddle is a code playground which actually is built around uh, web applications. So you have your HTML, you have your G uh, CSS and also your JavaScript. If you're thinking about something more advanced, you can look into code. Uh, code pen is actually also very good, but I was thinking about code sandbox. Uh, code sandbox.io. And this actually goes a little further because you can actually use uh, popular frameworks. You can use Angular, Vue, uh, React, and, and stuff like that. So it's much, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you don't need, only need to like use vanilla vanilla JS and, and CSS and stuff like that, but you can you can actually learn a framework like Vue. Um, okay, we got some questions. Let me let me get uh, through them. Uh, and Retrobear is asking like it's not on the topic of what I'm talking about, but what does it really mean to be a Cypress ambassador? Well, it kind of is on the topic because uh, it is a part of uh, of the journey. And uh, well, yeah, so ambassador. Uh, for those of you who don't know if, if, there's, uh, if there's anyone, uh, Cypress ambassadors is uh, what they call it is a uh, network of Cypress re experts dedicated to spreading knowledge, sharing best practices, etc., etc., and building community. And this is us. So here you can see my, my picture. And this is uh, this is the group of ambassadors, and you can actually you can actually apply uh, as a Cyprus ambassador. Uh, so it's not like totally closed group, uh, but you can apply to to be uh, and meet these awesome people, uh, meet them on Slack, talk to them, interact with them, and uh, and interact with people over at Cyprus. So what this aims to be is. Um, to be a group of people that basically blog, uh, write, create content uh, around Cypress, uh, teach uh, Cypress, and teach yeah teach testing in Cypress, and uh, what it what it means it's it's kind of a, an informal group, but uh, what it has enabled me to do is basically to get to reach out to you guys, uh, so the really cool thing about this is that whenever I write a blog about uh, about Cypress or, or make a video or something that um, guys in Cypress and gals in Cypress are actually so awesome that they will reshare that on their social networks. Uh, I can even host, um, uh, write a guest blog post which will appear right on the, on the blog page of Cypress blog. Cypress IO. So there, there are a couple of tests that I, I, I have here. A uh, test, a couple of articles that uh, that I have here. And yeah, it seems like it's it's quite a long time since I 
since I <laughs> written a blog for Cypress. I've been kind of blogging on my on my own page. Uh, and yeah, so Cypress uh, helps me get the reach of my blog. And I also get get uh, this awesome support from them. So if I if I need to ask anything that uh, or I'm not really clear on the topic uh, that that I want to that I want to explain in my workshop or in my video, then I can reach out to them and they're really nice and help me figure things out, figure things out, they give me feedback. Um, and I got this. Uh, I also got a few nice uh, perks like um, the Cypress swag. So if anyone attends my talk or my or, or my workshop, uh, they can get a T-shirt, uh, and I have this special link that I can share with my with my attendees, and then they will get a T-shirt and some stickers, and that's that's really nice. Um, it uh, it's not uh, it's not like a a paid program. It is I informal. So these guys. Uh, are basically uh, Cypress enthusiasts that like to like to talk about Cypress, like to uh, share what they learned uh, with the world, and uh, and in return they get this awesome support from from the Cypress uh, Cypress group. Uh, I have we have another question. Uh, very we have a very similar path that we took into testing. Same here now, trying to get uh time to dive deeper into js uh yeah good good luck to you i mean uh by the way uh we have a uh there's a uh, discord uh, link on uh, under this video somewhere so feel free to join us um it, we have a we have a group of uh cypress people that are uh, or people that are learning cypress and actually, my journey of uh, learning JavaScript was actually uh, hand in hand with the journey of me uh, learning uh, Cypress. So the cool thing, the, the one of the things that I loved about Cypress uh, right from the beginning was, of course, the documentation, but also their API, the syntax that they that they are using. Um, I, I come from, like when I started testing, I, I, I realized I need to do some kind, kind of automation. And uh, back then I was using Selenium IDE, which was this record and uh, click uh, record and replay tool that would enable basically you to record what you're clicking on, what you're typing in, and, uh, and, then, and then it would play for you. And uh, it sounds really simple, but once you get to use it, you realize that it's not like really that simple because if you, for example, if you have a to-do app and you create it, uh, create it an item and then try to play that same scenario again, then the app is basically not the same as, as before because now you have two items and then you have three and then you have four. And uh, you need to kind of figure out what's, uh, what's next for you. Uh, and the I, uh, Selenium IDE was really, really cool, and it really, uh, really enabled me to learn CSS selectors. It enabled me to learn about uh, expats and uh, basically to get a better understanding of how things are structured in in the HTML. Uh, and also, I got a little of uh, of uh, I got to learn a little about about JavaScript. Uh, but then when I had my scenarios, I kind of wanted to take them uh, somewhere else, like not only have to uh, not only have them in IDE, but maybe run them somewhere. I didn't know where. Uh, but at, at that time, uh, Cypress came along. Uh, they actually uh, the, the founder of Cypress actually had uh, his uh, presentation of Cypress uh, here in Slovakia. And uh, my colleagues were, were on that presentation, they said, wow, this is kind of a cool tool. Maybe maybe you should check it out. So I did check it out. And I when I saw the when I saw the picture on the on the homepage, uh, it wasn't 
the same but what i saw was was this like the this kind of window and i saw this visit wait click and it seems like oh this might be this this might be similar to selenium ide right so i just click on stuff and it will record and then i will play that and then i it was for invitations only back then and then i got the invitation i installed it and then i was like oh no i need to write <laughs> i need to write javascript i need to write code uh so that that felt like okay so yeah i should probably start learning this uh, and to my delight, it wasn't actually that hard. So what I did, I know what I wanted to do. I want to create a test that will open my site and then do something. So how do I open site? And I looked on it. I clicked on this visit command and it said it, the documentation was actually pretty similar to what it is today, uh, even, but now it's even better. And it was so cy.visit URL. And there was this example of CI localhost. Okay, so I'm not visiting localhost, but I'm visiting Slido. So that, that, uh, that was the application that I was testing. So let me, let me just copy this thing and, and then put my URL here. And voila, it worked. So that was awesome. Okay, so what do I do now? I want to click on the element. So let's let's look on the let's look on the click. Where is click? Okay, here I have it. So click. Okay, I have some options. I have something like that. Oh, this is the use it. So I first need to get something. And what's what's this get? Let me let me look into the into the get. So I looked into the get. Okay, so I get my selector and then i will use that click so i tried to use that and wow like magic it worked and actually the the simplest way or way of writing test tests was not that different from using the selenium ide because selenium ide i don't know if you know it maybe i should google it maybe is it still available selenium ide it seems like it's still it still is used. Uh, well, this is kind of a small picture, so let me zoom that in. And yeah, this this was actually really, really a good uh, a good thing. So you've got these three columns here. You have your command, you have your target, and you have your value. And you don't always have the value, uh, but you have, but you always have your command and target. So I would select a command. I would use the target. So the syntax would be fairly similar. Like I would open my page. I would click on an element, except that in Cypress, I would use two commands for that, right? So the first one would be the get and the second one would be the click. Here in IDE, you have that in, in, the, in the same one. And this, is, this was actually a really good tool into like getting the basic understanding of uh, of what uh, of what's what uh, I talked about uh, I talked about uh, Cypress Studio last time. Uh, you can check it out uh, check the uh, check out the video on on YouTube. And I I I really think that the Cypress Studio, uh, which is also kind of a record and replay tool, is very very useful for for learning your stuff. So you can learn how to how to uh, repeat the action you just you just did, and then on top of that, you can write assertions. So you're not only automating the flow, you're actually testing and making assertions and uh, stuff like that. So uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to read <laughs> read your nickname. So audio. Audiofly CJ. Okay, that, that wasn't actually that hard. So Audiofly CJ, if you're starting with JavaScript, I actually recommend uh, using using Cypress. And I'm not saying that only because I'm a Cypress ambassador, but I'm saying that because I had really great experience uh, learning JavaScript as I was trying to create uh, create tests uh, with with Cypress. So yeah, uh, so the next 
uh, next thing that was on my learning path as, as I was starting to, to use this was basically to learn what's API. I, I, we had, uh, when we were, uh, when I came to Slido, that was like five years ago. And by the way, Slido, let's look at Slido. Uh, this is Slido. This is this is where I work. This is the product that uh, that I am testing, and uh, it, it's awesome. If you haven't used it, if you have ever been on conference uh, and you got the opportunity to ask questions through your mobile, there's a chance you may have used Slido or some kind of other uh, audience interaction tool. Um, but uh, Slido is very fairly popular, so I hope you have used it. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is this is what I was testing, and there are just a couple of developers uh, uh, in the team uh, at the moment. And so one of them was doing the admin part, the other was doing the the participant part, the other was doing this wall part, and and. Um, and uh, there was a guy that was u that was doing the API, and I never knew what this person was doing. <laughs> I never understood what what he's actually doing, uh, because the API wasn't something that I could see. I could see the application that I was testing, but I wasn't able to see to see the API. So I uh, one day I was like, man, I'm in this company for a long time, for a couple of months now. I should probably know what what my colleague is doing so i was like what is api so this, this was this is what i did uh, i just google stuff and okay so there are some kind of videos and i'm not going to play that uh, try to mute that before it starts okay so and i think i actually saw this video <laughs> it's from 2015 there's a good chance i was watching this video uh, and there is like this metaphor that's been used uh, quite a lot, and the metaphor of API was uh, that you are, yeah, that you're in a restaurant and you are trying to order something, and you ask for something, and then you get that. And yeah, that's that's a pretty nice metaphor for uh, for API. But then I then I wanted to see like how can I how can I test the API and I stumbled upon an article that that was using Postman. So if you don't know Postman, it's is this great great application to test API. And I started to play play with that because what Postman does is that it enables you to just simply fire a request, an HTTP request or an API call and and uh, I found an article that that would show how API works on uh, on Trello. So Trello.com is this uh, is this really cool application. And uh, I went basically I went step by step on uh, on the tutorial, and there was an API call which would enable you to um, to create a new uh, board or a new list in inside your API, uh, inside your Trello board. And, oh man, like that first moment when, when I when I entered the, the scent in, in the postman and then a thing magically appeared on, on the board was just mind blowing. And uh, later I realized that these API calls, this is actually something you can see in your in your in your browser so let me just yeah let me just fire my fire my application real quick with where is the Trello app this is the app that I'm testing every week well almost every week and it's it's my app it's 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 well it's not entirely mine because I I cloned it from some other person on github and then basically basically uh, uh, re uh, rewritten it, but let me let me show you what I mean. So this is the Trello app, and and there is this network panel. And inside the network panel, 
if you if you don't filter al Golia, but if you filter XHR and do some action like create something. Hello. You can see that something is happening. And th this was the big aha moment for me. Like, oh, so this is the API. And I can actually look into the preview. I can I can see the data of this. I can see what was sent. I can see the different different headers and stuff like that. And the most magical thing for me was to basically right click on this, copy as CURL and then paste that into Postman. And I would paste that into Postman and then hit uh, the send several times and several boards would appear over here. And I was like, wow, so this is how web works. <laughs> this is how ev uh, web applications uh, work. So that was really nice, really nice step for me. So I kind of already know that if something red happens over here, that it's not good and I need to report that <laughs> to my developer. But then I realized, I, I, I found out that this is actually how web applications work, that they send API, they receive API, there are different kinds of endpoints. And this is basically how data is handled in a modern application or rather in the application that I was testing. Uh, of course, the situation might be, might be different, but since I was, uh, I was learning mostly about web apps, this was quite an interesting thing to find out. Um, so yeah, so as I as I learned more and more, I realized that yeah, the the postman is not that different from when you do uh, when you do request in uh, in Cypress. It's basically the same. You have your URL, you have your body, uh, you have your method. So what I started to do, started to do then is to see what's happening in in the application, uh, try to try to mimic it in Postman, and and then maybe try to mimic it in uh, in uh, Cypress. So I started I started using these requests basically to set up the state of my app. So for example, Slido being a Q and A platform. Let's say I have this scenario where I want to open my app and have a couple of questions already sent in. So what I would do is to send a bunch of requests, send a couple of questions and then open my app. Uh, and yeah, so that was that was really cool. Uh, after that, not only was I sending request, requests, but I was actually looking at requests. So. Let me see where's the root, 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 root. Here it is. So I read about this, and this is actually actually with the with the release of Cypress six, uh, it's actually deprecated in favor of Intercept. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to read more about that, check out my blog. I actually mentioned it uh, a couple of times. I think I already have two blogs on this topic. Uh, but yeah, I I looked into the root. So I wanted to see like what what does this mean? What what is this? And what I realized uh, that this is that uh, what it what this does is that you can actually watch for different requests. So whenever I do an action like create a board and type in something and then click save, I can look into these requests and I can actually see if it if it happened uh, and if it happened with the right right body right uh, right uh, request right response and stuff like that so I, I in uh, in conclusion I made my my tests more robu robust so I combined UI testing with uh, with uh, uh, network testing with testing of the API and this was really, really fun stuff to do in, in Cypress. And actually it was really, really easy. And uh, this is this is actually, I want to stop, stop here for a moment because like through all of my journey, I was having lots of fun with everything. And, um, and uh, uh, I, I heard this, uh, this uh, guy, Chris Biscardi uh, say, 
like uh, in in one of the Egghead po podcasts. By the way, Egghead is also a great resource for you to uh, for you to learn. They have this really snappy, to the point videos and courses that teach you exactly the 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 thing you need to know. They actually have been a real inspiration for me uh, for creating my Udemy course. And um, and uh, they also have a podcast. I'm not sure if if I can find it here, but in one of the podcasts, the yeah the talks, talks no podcasts, sorry. So in the podcasts, there was um, the there was Chris Biscardi, and he said one important thing about about learning uh, that do whatever keeps you going the next day so if you want to learn uh, programming if you want to learn something new uh, and you feel like you're not really having fun or you're really really struggling and it's you actually need to force yourself to learn something new maybe it's time to switch maybe it's time to learn something else and and try something uh, something maybe something easier maybe something different it really depends and uh, but as long as you're going forward, uh, it'll be good. And I really had this had these experiences in the past where I would uh, try to get wrap my head around sorry some kind of diffi difficult concept, and it just wouldn't work for me. I just couldn't understand what's happening. So I left it left it there, moved on to something new, and then a couple of days, weeks, months later. I stumbled upon that topic again and suddenly I learned it and suddenly I, it all started to make sense so if you if you learn something uh, something little every day I think that the pieces of the puzzles are going to fall together at uh, at some point so I think the advice of whatever keeps you going is actually great advice for for learning like don't put yourself down because you're not doing like some kind of awesome thing that you wanted to do maybe you will not do it today maybe you'll do it next week next month maybe next year maybe you you just didn't estimate that uh, very well and thought like this is easy but in fact this is what some of the senior developers do so yeah whatever keeps you going do that uh, yeah so the next next thing uh as i as i tried to as i learned about about cypress about different commands uh actually what i did and it kind of happened to me mm, by accident i i had a talk on uh, uh, i was invited to speak on a conference uh slido being uh, being a tool that was uh, that is used in conference well maybe was <laughs> used at conference because now there are no conferences uh, uh, beside online conferences but we're there too but uh, a couple of years ago uh, with uh, uh, with Slido we often attended uh, different kind of conferences and uh, and uh, once once it happened uh, that my colleague came to me and he said um, yeah, we're they're going to use Slido on on that conference, and they have invited you to uh, to come there. And I was like, yeah, sure, okay, no problem. I'll I'll go there. I, I support I support whatever they need, so no problem. I, I I'm glad I, I'll be glad to come to that uh, conference because they're talking about testing, and that's that's interesting. And he was like, no, 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 they want you to speak there. <laughs> and at that uh, at that point, I I was like couple of months in the, <laughs> into testing so I was really really not sure that that this is this is the right uh, right thing for me to do but uh, as it turned out it's it was yeah I didn't came there like an expert I came there to tell a story and I told the story of how we built uh, our QA team in uh, in Slido and it felt like it was really interesting so as a result of that, I got another invite, and I uh, I decided that in that invite I'm going to talk more about what we do in Cyprus, and Cyprus being 
quite a new tool uh, back then uh, it it uh, sparked an interest and it all kind of started uh, snowballing and uh, yeah and here I am so last year I think it was no it was actually two years ago uh, I got a, an invitation to to a conference and uh, they asked me if I wanted to do a workshop or if I want to do a talk and I was like maybe I could do a workshop and um, that was that was quite quite a big challenge for me but uh, what I did and uh, yeah going back a little I, I went on a conference we are developers and I met Gleb Bahutov from Cypress over there and I told him how we liked the product and uh, how awesome it is he was using Slido so he told me how awesome <laughs> how he liked Slido so we we became friends and uh, and uh, yeah so uh, uh, yeah I kind of lost myself there wh what I was talking about um, so yeah um, I asked him whether whether it would be uh, if he ever stopped by in, in Slovakia whether he would be willing to uh, create uh, do a workshop for us and for the local community and he told me yeah sure we can do but you don't have to wait for me there's actually a workshop that you can do yourself it's open sourced so where is it Cypress 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 um, workshop real one testing workshop Cypress so this is a workshop that Gleb has created and it's basically getting from A to Z in Cyprus. And what I did on that first conference where I had a workshop, I basically picked uh, chapters from this and then I, I tried to uh, teach those people uh, on the conference. And it went, uh, it went well, uh, although we spent a couple of minutes or maybe hours <laughs> setting setting everything up uh, because for some reason the npm start and npm install wouldn't wouldn't work for everyone so it was a kind of catastrophe but it kind of went well so <laughs> so this was the first experience with with workshop but then i decided well maybe i should take some ideas from this and and try to create something on my own but, uh, you know, I had my own ideas of what I want to teach. So there's this app inside it, um, this to do MVC app, which, uh, which is there a screenshot? No, there's not. So there's this to do MVC app inside it. And uh, you probably know, th uh, know that if not, let me just show you very to do MVC. Uh, yeah. So it looks something like let's let me just open. Okay, it has very different, uh, very uh, many different versions. Yeah, but this is basically it. So you may be familiar with it now. Now that you see it, so it's a to-do app where you can enter your to-dos, check them off, uh, and create them, delete them, and stuff like that. So it's a very simple app, and but I wanted to wanted to make it my own. So I took the to-do uh, app from this workshop and tried to see if I can if I can create something on my own. And luckily for me, this to-do app was written in uh, Vue.js. And if you already are familiar with HTML, CSS, no little JavaScript, and want to create something on your own, I actually really recommend using uh, Vue or learning Vue. I think it's r fairly easy to get a grasp on. At least it was for me. I tried to learn React. I tried to learn Angular, which is what Slido is written in, and uh, or mostly written in, and um, and kind of like didn't click for me. But the view was actually actually the one that that I could understand. So. After that, I I decided like yeah maybe I should create something on my own something new, but you know creating something completely on your own was really hard. So I wanted to create my own workshop, but uh, I wanted to use something else than than this. I wanted to use something different that to, than to do MVC, 
and I wanted to create something that's maybe a little similar to what Slido is, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Just something that people might generally understand what it is. Uh, so I started looking for clones. So I looked into the Slack clone. Uh, and this is not going to, yeah, this is just going to search all GitHub. Let's, let's search all GitHub. And there are many, many great open source projects on GitHub. And some are written in React, some are written in Vue, some are written in basically a bunch of different languages. And uh, this clone approach, <laughs> this searching for a clone, uh, actually uh, helped me to find this Trello app clone, which, uh, which was written in Vue, the first version. Then I have migrated it to the second version. And um, what I liked about the workshop uh, to do MVC was that it was using a JSON uh, database. So uh, non don't know if you're uh, familiar with Conduit project. It's uh, basically like a real world app where you can choose your front end, you can choose your back end, and you can mix and match between those. And I tried to play with that it wasn't really working for me, especially the setting up the database part. Uh, that was really hard for me to figure out. So I wanted to do something very simple like this data JSON, because what you need to do in this workshop is to git clone it, then change directory and then npm install. And after that you do npm start and you're good to go. And that, that was the experience I wanted to have for, for my attendees. So, I started searching for various clones app and tried to see if I can create something like that. And with Vue, it was really good experience. And what I did in the beginning was just look at the code, see what seems familiar and try to change that. I would start just by changing texts, like change the header, change the heading, uh, see what happens try to change some styles, see what happens. And then maybe try to change some interactivity uh, and then try to solve various problems. How do I add drag and drop in there? How do I implement this uh, data JSON database? Uh, how do I solve various problems? And uh, little by little, I was able to create something that, that I liked, that I was actually uh, satisfied with and then a couple of weeks came by and I looked at the code and felt like wow this is awful I need to make it better <laughs> and uh, it wasn't it wasn't actually bad because I uh, when I talked to one of my colleagues he said I spent 50% of my time creating new code and then 50% of my time optimizing it making it better refactoring it that's what the development work is. Like you create something to make it work and then you optimize it. Uh, maybe not everyone works in this way, but I find it really, really a great way of, of approaching uh, creating applications. And uh, I, I find it, uh, yeah, I, I really like that. So what I wanted to do with my app, with my Trello app was to just make it work whatever it takes, whatever spaghetti code I create, just make it work. When that happens, I will make it more optimal. I would say I, I, I will make my code prettier and, and basically, uh, yeah, make it more readable, make it more effective, make it more performant or, or something. And, uh, that, that would be my goal. And basically here I am, uh, <laughs> After, after creating this application, I decided that maybe I should start writing my own blog. And uh, uh, I started on Medium. You can actually find my blogs on Medium uh, still. Uh, but I stumbled upon this Egghead, Egghead starter blog. Uh, I think it was something like this. And I took the yeah, Gatsby starter egghead block. This was actually a really, really nice one. Uh, let's see if I can 
Is there a live version? Yeah, here's the demo. So I looked at this, uh, looked kind of neat. I, I liked it. It was very simple. It just had a couple of buttons here. Uh, so I basically took this project from GitHub and applied my own thing on it. I added some pictures, I changed, it, changed some fonts, I do a little of this, a little of that and made my own. And um, then I decided I can make something better. And I have really enjoyed this journey because it's it, uh, whenever I created something, it gave me tons of satisfaction. Uh, and then I started to look at it the second time I realized, yeah, maybe I can do it better. And now looking at my blog, uh, I have made it like a couple of months ago. Now when I look inside the code, I can already see, I can probably make it better. Uh, and this is, this is what I, what I enjoy about this. So yeah, I think, I think that's it. We kind of moved from, <laughs> from the beginnings to the, uh, to present day. And I'm really eager to find what, uh, what the next, uh, next days will, will bring me. Uh, so yeah, I guess, I guess this is it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for asking questions and, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, yeah, thank you for everything. Thank you for reading blogs and stuff like that. If you are new here, uh, there are links that you can check out uh, to my blog, to to my Twitter, GitHub, and every social network that I'm uh, that I'm in. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you very much for coming. Bye bye.